Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here today with what I think is a really exciting video for me to for me to make at least, hopefully for you to watch. Uh, I have had a phenomenal Victober, and if I can keep this party going, I'm going to have a remarkable nonfiction November. This is uh, nonfiction November, in case you don't know is an event that has been hosted for the past five years by Olive at A Book Olive. I'll put her a link below to her channel and where she talks about uh, this year's, the fifth year of Nonfiction November. As I was looking through my shelves and starting to think about this and looking at some of the other people's videos as they're posting them, I realized that I have more nonfiction than I expected in this house and I, don't really think of myself as a nonfiction reader, but yet you'll see that the evidence does not uh, prove that out. I think I'm interested in nonfiction a lot more than I give myself credit for. Uh, and I have a lot of books that I'm really excited about. So let's just jump in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of talk you through the, the four prompts that, that Olive has created, and then I'm gonna tell you how I'm thinking about if they fit, if they don't fit, and we'll see. So the four prompts this year are purposefully broad. So it's just one word. And as Olive said, you can create and determine what does that mean to you, to your, to your liking. So the first one is design. The second one is sport. The third is true. And the fourth is voice. So let's see, let's see what we can do here. Um, so when I think about what I'd like to do for nonfiction November, the first thing is I'd like to clear out some of the, some of the books that I have been collecting and trying to read a little bit at a time. I'd like to just take a stab at, at, at getting through them. So the first one, you may have seen this before if you've watched my channel, is Audrey and Rich's Culture, Politics, and the Art of Poetry, Essential Essays. And this was edited with an introduction by Sandra M. Gilbert. I am very interested in this era of feminism. I have not spent enough time reading it, thinking about it, understanding it. I tried to read this a little bit at a time and I think I just need to take the, take the dive and plunge right in. So this is something that I would, I would love. If I can finish this in nonfiction November, I will be very pleased with myself. I think this will fit for voice uh, because I think that she, Audrey and Rich, was a very unique voice at the time that she was writing this to merge poetry and language um, and use it as a tool and a means to discuss feminism, I think is, is quite exciting. She's done very interesting things here. She's And she's quoted all the time. She's a, a leader. She is a voice in this wave of feminism. So yeah, let's see if that fits for that for that one. So this I'm gonna use for true. And this is Letters Between Six Sisters, the Mitfords. And this is edited by Charlotte Mosley, who's the daughter-in-law of Diana. Uh, this is the letters that are recreated. And what's lovely about this is they use such strange nicknames and, and bizarre things that they, that they talked about there's it's actually annotated so that you can you can understand what they're saying uh, i have a deeply held fascination with the mitford sisters so i think i'll be delighted if i can get through this in november here's something i know i'm going to get to in november because i just pulled it out and i'm going to hold off uh i this will be a reread for me this is what we see when we read by peter mendelson Peter Mendelssohn, let's see if I can, you can see this, uh, is a graphic designer, book cover designer. He designed The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. He's designed very, very famous works. This is a graphic novel come uh, uh, essay collection on what, it, what happens in our brains, what happens with us when we read. Uh, it's very smart, it's very thoughtful, um, it's very fast, but I love it. And I think this would fit very well under design. Mm -hmm. Next up, let me think here. 
Uh, let me show you two that I'm going to read in parallel. And this is something that I ironically just saw on Celia's channel for her nonfiction November list, and I'll link that below. She's going to read Ex Libris. This is Confessions of a Common Reader by Anne Fadiman. I've heard amazing things about this. It's such a slim, lovely little book. Uh, so I think this will be fantastic to knock out. I'm definitely going to get to this. And in, in, in coordination with it, I'm also going to read Book Lust, Recommended Reading for Every Mood, Moment, and Reason. This is by Nancy Pearl. I think Sean the Book Maniac has made reference to this because in this book, she talks about the different ways that people uh, come to books and the different things that resonate, like what they find interesting or what hooks them. Uh, and she's kind of categorized that that event. And I am really interested in understanding that a little bit more. So I think those will be two that will be fantastic in parallel. And maybe that would go for design because you're designing your life around books. I don't know. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the next uh, voice. So I'm going to, this is a music related one. This is art, sex, music, Cosi Fanny Tutti. Um, this is basically an autobi autobiography of Cosi Fanny Tutti. She's a musician and an artist. She was a founding member of this avant-garde uh, kind of pre-industrial, they pretty much started industrial music called Throbbing Gristle. It was electronic uh, industrial music. Uh, she is a wild, wild child, absolutely wild child. I think this will be really funny. It's supposed to be super shocking, really out there, uh, not for the faint of heart. I have been incredibly interested in one of uh, her members of the band, uh, Genesis Peorage, who was one of the very first people that I remember pushing the notion of gender as a non-binary experience and really playing with gender from an artistic sense, from uh, this this uh, other other avenue here. It wasn't about trying to fit in and be seen as, but more rejecting the notion entirely and coming up with your own. Uh, so really interested to see if there's stuff about Genesis in here and then also uh, just understand a little bit more about her life. And I've, I think I might read this on vacation. I'm going to be going on vacation. This might be something that you want to read when you're not constrained by your normal boring life, you know, where you, you can kind of live vicariously through the wildness of, of somebody else. Uh, let's stay with uh, voice. I might or might not get to this yet. So this is Year of the Monkey by Patti Smith. Do you ever have books where you just, you, you, you know you're gonna care about it so much that you don't wanna get to it too quickly? I am, you know, Patti's older. Uh, she's an older stateswoman and I'm so afraid that we are gonna lose her soon and this will be her last work. And so I almost wanna save this for a rainy day. And yet at the same time, I just love her voice and I love what she does. So I'm, I'm, I don't know. We'll see if I, if I take the plunge. This is Year of the Monkey. This is her latest by, by Patti Smith, as I mentioned. I did a vlog of going to the event where she talked about this book uh, just last week. Uh, so I might, I might get to this. I might hold off. You'll have to stay tuned and find out. This came in the mail. I'm so excited. I am, I am just a huge Rachel Cusk fan. I think her mind is so smart and she's playing a very long view, uh, a long game with what she's trying to do and she's found ways to still say what she wants to say despite many times uh, in many different ways people have tried to silence her through the years uh, of her ideas of feminism and what it means to be a woman uh, that 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 is maybe differs uh, from conventional uh, thoughts of, of that a woman should just be absolutely in love with being a mother. And, um, and she just, she's a re she rebels against all of those, those, those things. And her mind is just so smart. This is a series of essays, essays that just came out. I'm excited to jump in and get started with those. And I would say maybe true or maybe design 
maybe voice because she has a unique voice so hard uh, let's see oh i think uh maybe a nice pairing with the uh, audrey and rich could be insurgent muse life and art at the woman's building and this is by terry wolverton this is something that was recommended to me uh, in my Bert's list. I will put that link to that video in the bottom. Uh, Bert has given me a tremendous uh, recommended list. Um, the whole story about that is in that video. This is one of them. And this is about the night in the 1970s building the women's building um, in Los Angeles, which was meant to be kind of a feminist art space. Uh, I think this is, sounds great to kind of pair it with the Audrey and Rich, so that might be a nice thing to do. Uh, really looking forward to reading that. What other things? Um, I also have, uh, I have not read this Deborah Levy. I also somebody who I'm, I am starting to revere. I read Hot Milk. I read, I read another book, an essay book of hers, uh, things, uh, things I don't want to know, blew my mind, absolutely blew my mind. And this is some one that I have yet to read and I've been staring at it, wanting to read it. Look at this cover. It's just perfection, absolute perfection. Um, so like Rachel Cusk, I think Di uh, Deborah Levy is absolutely brilliant and what she weaves into her stories is remarkable. Uh, I'm looking forward to buying the British edition of her latest book that did not make the the Booker shortlist, which I was very sad about. Um, the Man Who Knew Everything or something like that. Uh, so, but in leading up to that, I think I'm going to try to get to this. And maybe this is voice. Um, another thing, this will be under design. Uh, I've been wanting to read this for a while. This is How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy by Jenny O'Dell. Uh, Jenny O'Dell uh, is a local Bay Area. This is an autographed copy. I've been wanting to read this uh, as a means of slowing down and taking things a little bit more, more thoughtfully. I might, I might try to read this in the later on in the month as thanks as American Thanksgiving holiday comes up because I think this might be a perfect time to, to kind of slow down, go in and take a little bit of a, of a break. In with that, that concept and that idea, I'm going to pair that potentially with small pleasures. This is a set of essays from the School of Life. They do these really lovely little books and this is all about taking stock in the small things that makes our lives rich and adds value. And so it's writing specifically for that. And I think that would be a really beautiful opportunity to kind of uh, be thankful in advance of, of or coming up to or on Thanksgiving. So we'll see if I can get to those. Another two other books that um, that interest me th four more books. Uh, this was one of my Book of the Month Club picks. This is uh, about Egypt, and it's about the Egyptian revolution that just happened. It's called The Buried, an archaeology of the Egyptian revolution by Peter Hessler. Now, I have heard nothing but great things about him as an author, and I'm very much looking forward to reading this. And that cover is just stun absolutely stunning. Another book that I've been very interested in getting to, uh, nonfiction, it's Underland, A Deep Time Journey by Robert McFarlane. I think this cover is absolutely outstanding. I've heard amazing things about this. Uh, I've heard that Overstory is a nice counterpoint to this. This is kind of going deep into the roots and, and kind of what happens underneath in the darkness. Uh, under our feet. So it sounds just, if it can give me any of the kind of vibes or or enlightened observations that the overstory did, but do it in a nonfiction way, I will be enraptured. Uh, another book, this is going to be a buddy read that I'm going to be doing. This is Dear Friend, From My Life, I Write to You in Your Life. And this is a, this is a, an autobiographical um, kind of conversation that she's that she's um this is uh oh sorry yi yun lee sean the book maniac just raved about this about how how 
affecting this was. And it says, Yinyan Li confronts the two most essential questions of her identity, why write and why live? So this will definitely, I will definitely be reading this. And then the last thing that I have in my huge stack, this also was a Bert suggested read. It's called Black Ink, Literary Legends on the Peril, Power, and Pleasure of Reading and Writing, uh, foreword by Nikki Giovanni and edited by Stephanie Stokes Oliver. And this really is looking at, it's an informative overview of African-American literature. And it sounds phenomenal and fantastic. Woo! So like I said, I had really ambitious plans for Victober and my Victober, um, we're like at the halfway mark and my Victober is rocking. So maybe that's the trick. Maybe just go super big and then, and then see what happens. So let me know, do any of these sound appealing to you? Are you reading any of these as well? I'll, I'm really interested to look through everybody's TBRs videos. Uh, if you don't have a channel, um, please let me know if you're participating, what are you going to be reading? And that's it. I'm going to do another video. I'm going to tee it up and that's going to be novellas. So I'm going to try to sneak in some novellas for novella November as well. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.